First you slide the front, then you slide the back until you find that sweet spot. Hey guys, welcome back to Brevity. This is Vignesh and today we are going to cover a super super important programming pattern called sliding window. It is a variant of left and right boundary kind of two point algorithm. I have personally encountered it in three out of four interviews. You see how important that is. Even from an algorithmic point of view, it is very fascinating because it can solve a lot of problems in constant space complexity. Firstly, what is a sliding window? Let me explain. A window is just a group of n neighboring elements. More technically, a segment of n contiguous elements is called a window. And sliding here signifies that the selection of n elements moves to the n neighboring elements. Hey guys, this is Editor Vignesh. And if this guy was a Sikh, he would be a confused thing. Let me just show you what he means by sliding. Here, a window is a selection of three nearby elements. Now, when the first element is unselected and the last element is selected, then the window of neighboring elements has said to have slid. Hence the term sliding window. Enjoy the rest of the video while it lasts. Watch as a selected window slides through the array. There are two types of sliding windows. A fixed width sliding window and a variable width sliding window. We've just seen the demo of a fixed width sliding window of size 3. We'll be concentrating this in the next week when we start coding. For a variable size sliding window, we'll have two pointers, the front and the back or L and R, which specifies the window and its size. As it moves across, the size of the window will change. A variable width sliding window looks something like this. The right pointer moves to increase the size of the window. And the left pointer moves to decrease the size of the window. These two are called the growing and shrinking phases, which I'll cover very shortly. Before we proceed further, we'll need a bit of terminology. We've seen what a window is and what sliding means. Apart from that, the following are the components of a variable sliding window. We'll need two pointers, which will define the left and right boundaries. We'll need a test condition. A window is said to be valid if it satisfies a given test condition. It is else it is said to be invalid. We'll also need an intermediate storage which would be a variable or a hash map, which we'll check to check if the test condition is satisfied or not. Finally, we'll also need a variable that will store the maximum or minimum window size, which is the distance between R and L. Done? Now, let's explore the working of this algorithm. This algorithm works in two different phases, the growing phase and the shrinking phase. During the growing phase, the right pointer will move towards the right, thereby increasing the window size. The window size will stop growing, that is the right pointer will stop moving when the window becomes invalid and hence begins the shrinking phase. During the shrinking phase, the left pointer moves right, thereby shrinking the window. The shrinking phase will only end when the window becomes valid. Okay, confused, very confused or highly confused? It doesn't matter. This example might make it easier on your brain cells. Let's look at this. This is a question from lead code. Take a couple of minutes to fully absorb this in. I'll wait. Done? Okay, here's what we have to do. We have to return the length of the longest subarray that contains only ones. We can replace up to k values from 0 to 1. We can switch those values. Essentially, this question boils down to a very simple statement. Find the longest subarray or window which contains less than or equal to k zeros. That is all it is. Now that gives us our test condition which is the number of zeros should be less than or equal to k within a given window. If this condition is satisfied then it is a valid window. Now of all the valid windows present in the subarray we have to find the maximum sized one. Okay? Consider this representation of the array. We'll be using two arrow marks to represent the two boundaries, left and right. The highlighted section is the window. We'll also need an intermittent storage called zeros, which is initialized to zeros. It represents the number of zeros present inside the current window. We'll move the right boundary and expand the window while the window is valid. A window is valid when the test condition is satisfied. In this case, the test condition is 
the number of zeros is less than or equal to k. Hence, we can move the right, right boundary and increase the window size. This is the growing phase. The number of zeros is still less than k. We can keep increasing this. We have encountered the first zero. Now our window contains one zero. The one is still less than or equal to two. Hence, we can keep expanding it. After expansion, our window contains two zeros. Two is less than or equal to two. The test condition is still valid. So we can keep expanding it. We have encountered another zero. Number of zeros within the window currently is three. The test condition has failed. Now begins the shrinking phase. We'll shrink by moving the left pointer towards the right. As you can see, the window size has reduced. We'll be doing this until the test condition is met, which is the number of zeros inside the window is less than or equal to k. Now the window size is 2. We have two zeros within the window. 2 is less than or equal to 2. Now we can again start expanding it. We've encountered yet another zero. Now our window contains three zeros, which is greater than two. Hence our test condition fails and hence begins the shrinking phase. During the shrinking phase, move, we move the left pointer one step towards the right. Now our window has become valid again because the test condition is satisfied. Of all the windows that we've seen till now, this is the longest valid window. We'll be returning this. The size of this window is six. This will be stored in a max variable and returned. That is the conclusion and that is the end of this question. As for the space and time complexities, the time complexity is linear because in the worst case, an element present inside the array might be visited twice. Once while the right boundary is expanding during expansion phase and the other time while it is contracting during contraction phase by the left boundary. So 2n is asymptotically represented by O of n. As for the space complexity, we only need three other variables. It is independent of the, of the input array's size, hence it is called as O of 1 constant space complexity. I hope you've learned something and it was easier than learning alone. That is the motto here at Brevity. Join our Discord group if you have any more questions. That'll be all. Thank you guys, this has been Vignesh. Now, don't you dare not code. Choose one of these, Python, C++ or Java and code it. The following guys will help you. Click on those thumbnails. I'll be watching you.